Hello, everyone. I am Glenn Moyes. And I'm Adam Weber. And you can hear me now. Yay. Yeah, we are we are using some um, new hardware. I, I got rid of the tin can that I was talking into. You, you know, I, I just had this... Uh, anyway, sorry. Yeah, also known as a MacBook. Yeah, also no, yeah, known as a MacBook that has its own little microphone in there, laptop microphone, and... Yeah, I, I'm recording into real hardware now. Yeah. Last week, if you listen to our podcast, you probably noticed that the... Um, audio quality was different i sounded great but adam sounded like normal and the um as in crappy yeah and the comparison was a little too much because before the way we've, we've been doing these podcasts is we just record the we have this little skype recorder mp3 thingy and now we just use that but uh, last week i recorded my part separately um he recorded his part separately um, then I combined the files over here and we're still going to do that except, um, Adam now has this, it, it was a Christmas present, same exact hardware that I have microphone stand preamp. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, the running joke is it was a Christmas present to both of us because <laughs> when I'm talking to him through Skype now, now, uh, I don't sound like I'm talking into a tin can on Glenn's end. You know, for me, I, I, Glenn sounded great, and I could hear myself just fine, but, <laughs> you know. Yeah, when we're on Skype and stuff, but when he actually gets to hear it, you know, what he really sounds like, it's like, oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I hated hearing it on the on the podcast. I would, I would listen to our own podcast after we record it, see how it turned out, and it wasn't pretty. Yeah, so it, we fixed that really quick. Yeah, yeah, all fixed. Yeah, I think it was actually the next day, wasn't it? Um, uh, it, might, it might have been a couple of days later. I can't remember, but it's fixed. Yeah, it's like as soon as you actually got to hear the podcast, we talked about it, and then I ordered the stuff. So, but uh, anyway, so yes, we're high tech now. We're now legit. Um, Yay! Yeah, we are now using recording hardware that costs more than a hundred dollars. So <laughs> we're legit now. <laughs> I guess that makes it. Le- I guess legitimacy is measured in the cost of your toys. Yeah, pretty much. Maybe it is. I don't know. Hello, everyone. This is Glenn from a week later. The irony of the conversation that Adam and I just had is that roughly at the one hour and thirty-seven minute mark, it is my voice that sounds like it's coming out of a tin can. The reason behind this is that during the process of doing the post-production on this podcast, um, while I was doing the denoise, I decided to save over the original source file instead of making a backup, and my computer crashed. Because I had the gall to move a browser window that had Flash video running on it from monitor 1 to monitor 2. So thank you, Adobe Flash. You have yet again figured out another way to inconvenience my life. Uh, But the good news is, is that VLC, which apparently can play everything, including corrupted Windows files, did manage to save the first three quarters of the audio. So, but I didn't want to re-record the last 30 minutes again. So my voice is just going to sound like the way it did in Skype. Just to give you some fair warning that your speakers are fine, it is just my computer crashed. Okay. Back to our regularly scheduled podcast. So, alrighty. Um, so what we're going to do for today's podcast, while we're still trying to uh, get stuff ready for the Animation Academy, uh, we thought it might be interesting to do a um, an origin story of both myself, Adam, and Lumaglyph, the uh, name of our studio, just so we can kind of get this out of the way so we don't have to do this again, you know, the origin story, because, yeah. <laughs> and, and now since it's, we're a little bit closer to our actual origin, um, you know, doing an origin story now as opposed to 10 years in the future when we've forgotten, you know, most of the stuff about how we started. Well, what else will be fun about this is that other people, uh, or, what, or in other podcasts, I mean, we can always refer back to this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, I'm always really big about, um, you know, keeping a production journal, uh, having all of your discoveries and conflicts, having all of that recorded down so that uh, you don't forget how you learned and you don't forget 
you know, what made things work and what made things not work. Because uh, a successful project or even a poorly executed one does kind of screw with your mind <laughs> as far as, um, you know, what to do next time, you know. There will be a quiz. There will be a quiz. <laughs> yes, there will be a quiz. Um, so anyway, um, so Adam, let's go ahead and uh, start with you as far as your origin story. Oh, yeah. My, I was born at a very young age. No, I... Uh, my passion is stories. I love stories. Um, and my, my mother will tell you, I, I was a little kid. I'd follow around the house and I'd tell her, tell her my stories. And I, most, a lot of it would be made up as I go. But I think what actually the origin of that, going back even further, my grandfather uh, used to tell, the, tell us these stories, these Daniel Boone stories. And they were very simple. They followed a very simple formula. He, uh, you had this little Daniel Boone character and, and his sister, and they all they go out and sneak out in the middle of the night and get on their horse, Smokey, and then go off on this adventure. They would have some sort of threat, and he'd pull out his magic tomahawk, and, and it would handle whatever the threat was, and then they'd get back before their parents saw them. And I, and I never figured out when these characters slept because they were out all night. But... What happened with this, with these simple stories, was it really sparked my little imagination. I would go around. I would come up with all these stories of my own. I was just fascinated by how this works. You create this fantasy world. You could go anywhere in the con context of a story. And I've been a real nerd about this thing uh, growing up. And, um, and I remember, like, I don't remember how old I was when I came up with my first one, but the problem that I had was I had no understanding of what it was that made a good story, how they worked, and they were very derivative. That you, you, when you read a story written by me at the time, or you can see this in a lot of authors today that are that are less experienced, um, is they tend to be very derivative. They tend to be very simple. If there are three w pathways to. Uh, to the end goal, they always take the simplest. Um, you tend to have very stupid villains, uh, cookie cutter villains, cookie cutter heroes, and they're very, very predictable because of this. Because this is all stuff you've seen before, and I was certainly a victim of this. Um, Me too, by the way. Yeah, well, well we all were. I, I mean, you're, that's part of being a storyteller in the early stages of your um of your journey to becoming good and like anything else you know when you get the further you get into uh something you're passionate about the more work you put in the more you study it the more feedback you get you're naturally going to get better at it you know and I, i've been doing this since i was a really little kid um and i really wanted to get into a medium that would allow me to tell my stories and um, and I felt like I was a terrible writer, and I was at the time. I, but at the time, I, I was thinking writer as like a novelist. I was no novelist. I could barely sit through a novel at the time. Well, now I can. Like today, I've always got novels that I'm working on. But back then, there's no way I could write a novel. But I thought, well, I could animate this. <laughs> oh, if only I knew. <laughs> so I started studying animation, and I – and. This was also when this happened. This is about the time uh, Toy Story came out, and that really sparked my passion for animation. Because I remember two D animation; I knew that was art. You know, you drawing, but computer animation for some reason it didn't click as art. It clicked as technical. This is a technical skill. So I started learning software. I I what I don't remember what when I finally got my hands on Maya. It would be, been like version three, but I was using something else before then. Um, like an early version of Max or wh whatever that whatever it was that I had. I remember I had Bryce 3D, but that was a little bit later. Um, and I, I got to where I knew these 3D programs like the back of my hand. I, I knew exactly where everything was. I knew the technical side very well. I could rig characters. I, I was a high school kid, and I knew, I knew rigging. Um, I knew all the technical jargon. And um, so... About the same time, it was about 1998, I think it was. Yeah, it was 1998 in August. I started writing uh, the first serious story, or at least then I thought was the first serious story, um, 
which was at the time called the Superhuman Project. You, you can see what that I was still in the very derivative, simple mindset. It was later renamed as actually a Glenn suggestion. He came up with that in title. Yeah, and I'm probably going to bleep that out so we can, you know, that because that's a Lumaglyph project. Um, okay. The, so title that, the title that has just been bleeped out, <laughs> you probably won't bleep out the old title. No. Because <laughs> it's yeah. amusing. The, the, the Superhuman Project, yeah. It's it's pretty amusing. If you if someone saw a film called The Superhuman Project, they pr probably wouldn't go see it. I'll get into that in a second. Um, but but yeah, it, it it had all of those problems, you know, because I was I was in middle school when I started writing this thing. I it it was very derivative, very simple. Always took the path of least resistance. And you, you know, if you want to see a good example of contemporary writing, a, a popular story that's like this, you can read Aragon. It's got all these same problems, and it's it's not that uh, that that author is incapable of writing a good story. It was just inexperience. You know, they're, they're they're all touting, oh, he's 16 years old when he when he wrote this, and well, it shows. But it's a classic example of the problems that um, inexperienced or very poor writers have and all of us any anybody who's going to get into writing is going to start that way there's nothing wrong with that as long as you recognize hey i've got a long ways to go and start on that journey so um so then then i i start thinking okay well i'm gonna gonna animate this and when i got into uh college i started taking classes at community college and they they offered computer animation classes and so in my mind, oh, this is just awesome. They teach computer animation, and I'm going to be able to, to animate for reels and, ma and make this stuff for, for reels. Now, of course, uh, the person who taught the class really had was about as inexperienced as I was. And if you would have asked me at the time, I probably wouldn't have said I was inexperienced. But um, now I'm 10 times as experienced as I was then, and now I recognize that I'm inexperienced. But maybe that you make some metaphor about the more I know the more I realize I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, same same kind of thing. So, um, so I go in there, and the instructor goes up, and he's he's putting up demo reels, and he's showing us clips from DVD making of. He didn't teach us a thing in there, and so I opened up Maya, and, and by this point, I knew the software really. It was probably Maya version five by then, or so, so five or six, or something like that. And I started modeling a human head, and um, and, I, and I knew how to. I knew this really well. This was uh, box modeling that I was using at the time. I later switched to point to point, but at the time I was using box modeling, and all the other students looked over at what I was doing, and it, and it looked like a head. You know, my, the proportions were awful. I, I didn't have the art skills to back it up, but I, the technical skills were definitely there. I understood edge loops, and I understood um, how this thing should be constructed. And everyone was just riveted by this. I had people surrounding my computer, and uh, I I had to start over at their request and show them how to do what I was doing. And many of the students expressed how they learned more from me in 10 minutes they learned from the instructor in the three weeks of the class. And I was, of course, very irritated at, the po at that point and dropped it. But that was... And that was still before I understood, hey, animation is art. It's not a technical skill you know rigging is maybe but but animation is not and so um and, and i was also a business major at the point and, and this is kind of a funny story um you know they all of the the art and business classes were in the same building at this particular school so to get to my business classes i'd walk past all the artwork and i'd just be like i want to do that and i was always jealous of them and ended up taking these animation classes and and stuff. So I decided that I was going to, when I was going to transfer to a quote-unquote real school, because I wasn't really learning much from the community college, the, their, their skill level there is about the same as high school. You're not going to learn much more from there than you're going to learn at a high school class. So I went to transfer to BYU-Idaho. And when I uh, went to declare my major... Um, of course, at my my dad's, you know, beating my head. You got to go into business, business where all the money is, and uh, you need to build a supportive family. And so I go in there, and they have the drop down box, and it was alphabetical. And so there's business, and darn it, what was right above it? Art. 